so thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to speak today. Um, I want to thank the robot for allowing me to introduce our time for the four months. So, but you talk so, louder, Benny. What? Talk louder. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, I was like, okay. So I'm gonna talk about decoding token radiation by quantum teleportation. It's still in preparation, but it's a very simple idea. Um, so the motivation is the following: in black hole information programs, uh, we typically consider scenarios where uh, Alice throws a quantum state into a black hole and the bubble wants to reconstruct it by talking radiation. And uh, Katie has observed that, uh, um, well, basically Bob needs to wait until uh, half of the black hole to evaporate in order to reconstruct the state. But uh, Katie and Pesky added an interesting twist to the situation, but there's, uh, they said that the black hole has already emitted half of its content, and the black hole is uh, entangled, maximally entangled with Bob's quantum memory. In this case, if Alice throws an uh, mQbit quantum state, then Bob just needs to collect only m plus epsilon qubits to uh, reconstruct this size. That's the error. Um, uh, this was very pioneering work. This led to Google Big Bang's so Scrum breakup. But there is a subtlety in this argument in the sense that, uh, well, what they proved is that information theoretically possible. That is, uh, they proved that there exists such decoder V operator, which emits this size thing. But the question is, is this really physically implementable uh, in the sense of data complexity? Also, finding this V, is it computationally profitable? Or not? So these things are sort of clouded. Uh, over the uh, debate on the debate on the uh, firewall problem. So that's the motivation. But uh, so in, in this part, I want to argue that it's actually well, for this KDM Prescue type decoding problem, uh, decoding may not be as difficult as we <coughs> expected. So I'm going to propose a very simple decoding problem. But there's one important subtlety that is uh, my, my method works with probabilistic means. So sometimes it works, sometimes it fails, but uh, the probability is fine. The idea is very simple. Um, it's, it's super simple. Uh, Bob sort of teleports Alice's quantum state to his register qubit by some post selection. But the post selection happens with some finite probability. So let me just tell you the problem. Again, it's very simple. So this is the original setup state, black hole, maximally entangled. This is talking radiation. Now, what Bob is going to do is Bob prepare. So I'm going to assume that this is just one qubit state. Then Bob prepares additional EPR here, here. And he feeds one of the qubits into the black hole, the other side of the black hole. And then uh, the other half, he keeps it as a register qubit. And then he implements complex conjugate of this unitary. So it must be used sharp. It's not good at it's important. Now what he is gonna do is uh, he collects only a pair of uh, just one pair of uh, walking radiation from two sides. Then here's an important point. Uh, Bob performs bare measurement on these walking radiation. So bare measurement is this way. <coughs> And then um, this protocol succeeds only when uh, Bob measures the uh, EPR pair. So if Bob measures an EPR pair, then actually this quantum state sort of teleports immediately to this. So um, Benny, does Bob need to go into the black hole to get so, so like that? Is one of the things he's measuring inside of the black hole? Uh, he, he got arming radiation <coughs> coming out of the black holes. Right. And he, he does it. It's, it's just a uh, uh, black hole. Two two like 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 D is the next fucking quantum. The squares are black holes. And yeah, so, uh, so sorry, it's, it's one, black one, black one black hole and it's the other half. Right. So I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about like half time field down the space. It's a work hole, it's a work hole, not a black hole, you make some black hole. No, it's not. Uh, so that, that, that's that's important. So you can't do that. Well, I don't know. No, no, but Benny, do you want that on the bottom line? Do you want that second dot? Is that really a black hole? Or is that the hot so, radiation that the black hole is going to take? Well, maybe. Uh, so so, so let, let, let me just clarify that the problem setting I'm considering is that uh, I'm assuming that this is a time field double state, that this is a pure time field double state. So these are two black holes. Right, right. So in some sense, it's uh, unstructured uh, decoding. It's, 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 it's,
It's already done. Yeah. So it's a big behind the changer. So that's why. Um, yeah. So. Anyway, so I, I think we are confused about notation. What are the black dots and what are the squares? Uh, the rectangles. Yeah, the rectangles. Like, like what's a black like, hole and what's not a black hole? Like, like rectangle is just a unitary operator. And, uh, okay. So, so I, I, I draw two dots. It's maybe confusing, but it's an uh, entangled ground hole. <coughs> two sided ideas. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. So, but, but I, I mean, I motivated the program from. Uh, for viewpoint, but it's, I think, purely quantum information. But anyway, the point is, all Bob needs to do is do the EPL uh, projection. And then, um, so the point is, this protocol works very well, as long as this unitary view is strongly scrubbed. And uh, I'm going to claim that this uh, probability of measuring EPL pair is actually fine. In this case, it's at least one of them. But Bob does need to implement U, U star, right? Yeah, he needs to implement U star. Which is complicated. Yeah, I don't know, but nature does use, so I don't think it's But I agree that some people yeah. may have some. But so it's not necessarily exponential. It's not necessarily exponential. Okay. OK, so this is the protocol. So now let me argue why this works. Uh, what is what is wrong with this one? So I'm going to. And also, how is P chosen? P is arbitrary? P, we? The input. The input arbitrary, yeah. <coughs> so now, uh, I'm going to first tell you why it should work when things are maximally strongly. Um, I don't want to go into the detailed definitions, but uh, um, all you need to look at this is, uh, so in Hayden Presque, uh, Nice thing about their paper is that they view this unitary operator as a quantum state. Then they argue that this A and the B are sort of nearly maximally entangled. And then this can be computed by mutual um, information between A and B. So, but for simplicity of this discussion only in this slide, uh, let's assume that this is maximal. Then this means that operator acting on A has some corresponding operator acting on B, which does the same thing. Yeah, but I can do this argument for u sharp, then x star, and x star tilde. But then, if you look at this figure, then what I'm doing is just I'm projecting EPL here, which is same as I'm drawing right here. Then you see that x propagates to here, and then it cancels by this x sharp. So this and this is the same, which means that this input is much more correlated and tangled to this. <laughs> so if you put psi, you always get psi. As long as it is maximum. So this is the So it's a very simple. It depends on getting the right result of that of the measurement of the two reds. Right, right, right. So in this case actually uh, I need to measure um EPR pair. So they are but not only a maximally internal pair, but one particular maximum. You, you get a bell measurement with a particular outcome. So, so yeah, Right, right. One particular coherent one. Yes, yes. So this exceeds one quarter of the time. Uh, it's up, uh, I can actually okay, okay, So let me just the next one. Uh, but uh, I can prove that it's at least one over. Four. At least one over four. Yeah. And then, so now let, let me compute the probability of uh, measuring an EPL pair by both. Then I got this expression. Uh, I'm not sure if this is intuitive or not, but. Uh, the point is, uh, when this is qubit, then it's at least one over four. So when the system is uh, very chaotic, this probability becomes smaller and smaller. But still, it's finite. The size of A is finite. And then, OK. So this is uh, a probability for post selection. And then now, assume that uh, I successfully measure the EPR here. Then what's the probability of successful <coughs> teleportation? And then this can be uh, uh, quantified by fidelity. And, uh, so I'm not going to go into detail about how we carefully define fidelity, but uh, I can give you later. The point is this fidelity can be also computed after the post selection. It looks like this. So the point is, um, if it's not scrambling at all, then this function is just wrong. So fidelity is the same as just randomness. So, Benny, this, this IADD, is it 
is it exponentially small in the entropy, or is it just no, 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 no. Just a few qubits. If, 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 right? if your message size is very small, then it's fine. Yeah. But if you want to feed lots of information, then it becomes yeah. Okay, fine. Okay, so this is a case. So, um, so, but if it's maximally chaotic in a sense that this is big, then it approaches to unity. So that's. So the nice thing is that uh, this formula works for intermediate scrambling version. And uh, I observed some interesting trade off that there's a, well, if you multiply these two numbers, you get something. Okay, so these are the just details for calculations, but I think for graph for physicists, this function is not so nice. But uh, so the nice thing is, let me advertise my previous paper. Um, this, um, Author T and uh, Robert, um, two of the authors uh, in this room. The point is, this function you can actually compute from out of time order the population function. Um, in this case, uh, you compute the OTO sheet for uh, Alice encoding qubits mode and uh, outgoing voting variation. Then you can compute this. Then, well, we want to compute the average, but we have this nice expression. So, post selection probability is actually proportional to average of OTO sheet. And uh, fidelity is inversely proportional to the edge. So if it's very strong, when this is small, so it becomes bigger. So that's the result. Okay? So, so now. And where is B on the right hand side of that equation? Wait, where? In, in the bottom here. Here, out of time order. Yeah, B, 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 D? B, 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 B on the left hand side. D, B. B. B is the second letter. Well, I, I don't know about it, but it's, it's, this, this is the, so. Okay, I'm, I'll ask you what you're doing. It's just a uh, audio uh, you can yeah. compute in. The question was, where it is in the right hand side? Where is it in the right hand side? Right 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 <laughs> 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 go back to the formula. This is, this is, oh, okay, uh, where is the dependence of, of B on the right hand side of the formula? One line, up. One, line one up. up, one line up, one line up. I see A's and B's. What is the dependence of yeah. B on this point? Yes. B, 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 depend, B is a component of A. Uh -huh. So, 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 so uh, I think this formula is nice because you only look at A and B, but somehow you know entanglement involving B. But okay. somehow it works. Okay, so now let me move on to a big second slide, but uh, now, now uh, so the point is our decoding protocol works even in a weekly scrambling regime too. So let me briefly remind you what was the Hayden um, uh, Prestige argument on this black hole complementarity. That is, uh, suppose you have this uh, Einstein gravity or um, holographic CFT, then both you see the case like this. I'm showing just a connected piece. So the scrambling time, both can be considered are stay faithfully because mm -hmm. this becomes small. But the point was, it's too late. Uh, before Alice signal reaches both, uh, he hits the singularity. Or Alice needs to use a super Planckian like, energy to do this. And um, so black hole complementarity sort of saves the non problem theory in this situation. But uh, I can think of the following scenario that there's a Bob can reconstruct Alice's quantum state, but only imperfectly at order uh, time one. So it's after the formalization plan, but before the scrambling plan. Then you, you still have like small decay of OTO sheet. So this means that uh, 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 Bob can reconstruct Alice's quantum state, but only imperfectly, like at the level of like, 1 over n squared. So he holds this slightly a very imperfect clone of Alice's state, and he can jump into the black hole. But in this case, Alice has enough time to shoot a message. She can use very low energy thing. So it seems to me that uh, they can verify the quantum cloning at the very at the next leading order correction. And then I do not know how to resolve this. Maybe there is another one by n square factor which makes Alice's quantum state go here or something like that, or I don't know, but uh, that's a mystery to me. Anyway. But one can do imperfect quantum cloning, right? Yeah. If, it's, if it's not the same state, or if you probabilistically get a clone, these things can be done. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So this may not be a contribution. Right, right, right. So, so actually, uh, I'm a bit, bit uh, yeah, I was a bit worried about talking about this, but I, I want to make this statement more quantitative and rigorous. 
that's one thing I'm hoping. I have a comment about this. I think there's a this ER called the ER thing gives a new perspective on this on this question, which isn't that you hit the singularity before like you were able to like send the signal and the mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. things present, mm -hmm. but that the measurement that Alice does outside the black hole disturbs the bit behind the horizon because uh -huh. it goes through the wormhole. Uh -huh. And so what you're describing here is that it would so disturb it a little it. bit. So so there is some process which compensates this. Yeah, so, but it isn't that we're rescued by some kind of a curtain that comes down at the scrambling time. It's just that the effect is small before then, but it would be non-zero. Mm -hmm. I think that's okay. That's yeah. not inconsistent with the okay. way you're describing it. Maybe we can change the incubator. So from from a uh, theoretical computer science mm -hmm. perspective, I've always been bothered by the idea that the dynamic, the computational complexity, that, 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 uh, that um, black hole complementarity is pr preserved by the high computational complexity of the moon. Because I have an intuitive feeling that even if I had an oracle for the Hubble problem, uh, there should not be an information theoretical contradiction that comes out of black hole physics. Right. In other words, the high computational complexity, if, if, if an infinitely powerful computer could create a paradox, I feel there's a paradox still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you may be saying there's other reasons for making that because you simplify the computation. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, all I want to say is I'm, well, to, I'm saying that this situation of decoding is not that big. Right, and, 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 and Charlie, I mean, what, what if a powerful enough computer doesn't create a paradox, but merely a breakdown of effective field theory? That, that are you bothered? Um, <laughs> I, I, I guess uh, I, 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 I would rather live with a breakdown of effective field theory. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cause I, cause, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you're loyal to the, the discipline you grew up in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, 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 <laughs> It seems to me that that's the situation. You know, like for me, effective field theory can totally go. I never, you know, cared about it in the first place. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I should remind you that quantum computers you use live with the effective field theory. Right. 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 Uh, no, no, because like, the first step usually is the one to hold them in their tracks, right? So, 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 like, 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 so, so I'm, I'm not, not going to say anything about the quantum computer I want to concentrate on KDM Presque setup because, yeah, yeah. Okay. But this seems to undermine all of that reach. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I feel the pressure to talk about that. I, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, it, because you use the U conjugate, uh -huh. uh, which is uh, as complicated as the black hole itself. So, but it, <laughs> if, you, you, so. If, you, you, if you don't know that example, you know it's. it's oh, so like if I, I didn't know that, then I mean, I mean, Hayden Press' argument also doesn't know. We need to know that. But let me, let me, I want to talk about one more thing. It is again, sorry, speculative, but uh, it's a transversal one. And uh, so, uh, uh, it's, it's related, I think. Um, so uh, we can consider the uh, eternal radius black hole, and you see that uh, uh, no light can go through the one hole. That's because you have two CFPs, which are not interacting at all. But uh, uh, in a recent paper, a uh, very interesting paper, Gao, Japanese, and Paul suggested that uh, it's, this one hole can become sort of traversable by coupling these two boundaries. Um, by adding some um, double trace deformations. And then, um, the, but the, I, I think this decoding protocol sort of can be interpreted as a traversable one hole. And uh, in a sense that, uh, so this is a Penrose diagram, and then time flows upward and downward. But in my protocol, time flows up, up. So in order to make an analogy, actually, I need to uh, flip upside down. So let's do that. And then in a, uh, Let's redraw it in a very suggestive way, which is like this. So uh, it used to be U dagger, but uh, U sharp, but because I rotated, so it becomes U 
you you divide, right? So then uh, the point is uh, you have some input to A, which is like involving uh, involving qubit, and then it pops up the, this this operation. So it's like light somehow went through. And then the point is that uh, so A and B are like uh, involving and uh, outgoing uh, radiations, and uh, so B and C are some field modes propagating between boundary and um, horizon as well as some high energy things. Um, so then, of course, if I don't do any coupling between two boundaries, uh, this light or information cannot go through. But what I do is I do the post selection of time, final, final time here. Then somehow this light always goes through. Well, not, uh, if I post select. Uh, are you saying the post selection is like the coupling between the two sides? Right, 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 right. So of course this. Except that it's not, right? Except, I'm saying except that it's not because well, here you're involving the two CFUs with a, with a unitary operator. Mm -hmm. While that's not what post selection is. Where, uh, where would the post selection be? Which which two lines do I join? I forgot. So so uh, uh, this red, red things are the open oh, okay. So I I do the post selection coupling and projection at this time. <coughs> so it's on D and D D prime. D and D prime because it's now rotated. Okay, but uh, I want to emphasize some similarity and difference. So their 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 one code is actually uh, interpreted as a deterministic decoder. But uh, I think this viewpoint was I, I think they credit that this viewpoint to Mother Sena in their paper. But uh, um, it's a this is a deterministic decoder, but mine is a probabilistic decoder. So theirs is actually much better in that sense. But uh, it seems, I, I'm not an expert with this thing, but uh, it's, their method seems to be very specific to eternal areas map with um, Neumann boundary condition, which is not the ordinary uh, boundary condition we put in areas shape. But uh, in, in my case, it works for any uh, unitary operator. And, uh, so, but, but that price I need to pay is a cost selection. But in order to <coughs> verify the uh, no cloning and so on, I only need to Succeed with some finite probabilities. Probability. Okay. Anyway, so that's the main thing. And then let me, I think I should summarize. But in, in many of the cases, in of these cases, do you actually violate the uh, principle of locality or causality? Right. You, the black holes have to be close enough that you could uh, communicate between them. Or right, 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 right. right. Yeah. So there's no issue here of violating locality by traversability. No. So, so didn't you turn a probabilistic decoder into the term that's the one you think of one of So I, I couldn't hear something. Couldn't you turn a probabilistic decoder into a deterministic one using quantum error correction? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I mean, the sentence sounds interesting. I want to think about that. <laughs> but but uh, I, I, I tried several ideas on that. So if, if I measure wrong thing, then it, it, it fails. It, yeah. So there, there are cases actually, uh, which, well, I, I, I'll talk to you later. Okay. So yeah, um, it's actually, well, no, no so sorry. Let, let me summarize the book. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, I propose this determinist probabilistic decoder, and they realize on scrambling. I, I think that's a very important thing. And, um, but uh, so I, again, I want to emphasize that this decoder does not provide any decisive answer to AMP's paradox, especially this uh, uh, decoder, uh, decoding problem formulated by Harrow and Haidt. But uh, I think it challenges in a very interesting way that uh, maybe we should be more careful about complexity theory argument. And it's actually interesting because this probability comes in the complexity theory in a very interesting way. And post selection and so on actually drastically change the complexity process. So it may be an interesting question. But uh, I'm personally interested in generalizing this result to finite temperature. So, so far, uh, implicit assumptions, uh, I'm working the infinite temperature regime. But uh, then I mix the I use this OTOC formula from finite temperature results. So this thing should be, I think. 
But uh, another thing I'm particularly excited is like this is like I think very simple setup for experiment. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, <laughs> like like the point is I can prepare <coughs> two qubits, three qubits, and so on. We can do some experiment with yeah, in directory uh, measure to the OC. So you maybe prepare. You need to prepare the U and U star for that. But, but U star is but, but, but sometimes U star is the same as U. It's always, right? It's not easy. Yeah, no, you, you just take the star of each gate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, 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 that's yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. That will be the, the challenging part in environment. Like you, you have some time evolution U, and you yeah, want to do the exact conduit thing. But decoding was much harder than that. For the argument of Carlo and Hayden, I think the difficult step would be to turn an, a complicated uh, an entangled state between a black hole and mm -hmm. some other system right, right, right. into the term of double. Right, right, right. So, so that's, that's the difficult step. Yeah. So in, in, in that case, uh, I'm talking about the situation where the Carlo and Hayden decoding is already taken care of. So, um, um, Betty, how, how does this relate to the loophole that uh, Oppenheim and Unra pointed uh, out? Oh, yes, yes, yes. It, it, it's kind of related. In yeah. some sense, I'm doing some computation or pre Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, so, so, so you are right. It has some similarity, but yeah. I, I don't have any deep comment I can make. Okay. But um, maybe it's. Mm -hmm. But, but I mean, I mean, they were yeah. also saying like if you prepare, if you were smart yeah. enough to prepare the black hole by entangling it with some reference system that you created, yeah, yeah. Then for that black hole, you would not have. Right. 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 But for them, it's still this thing where they need to prepare the thermal field. You know, they need to be able to prepare the thermal field. Yeah, but they've all the time in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. right. I mean, right. right. So, so. Okay. Anyway, so right. thank, right. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>